Can you hear me now? Can you hear the cries of the refugees fleeing from the war-torn countries started by seeing politicians that can't stand for their citizens, let alone fire the gun used to make them bleed? There was a time in this world where a white man wouldn't even let a colored sit beside him because he believed that he was superior and that nobody had the right to occupy the empty seat beside him except for another of his kind. Virginia, war has broken out. North versus South, Union versus Confederate, Free versus... Thomas B. Hampton, my great, great, great grandfather, takes three musket balls to the thigh. He's killed by infection two weeks before the war is. He dies for his people. What I mean is he dies to keep his people. Provocative, explicit, inappropriate, vulgar, like honestly, censorship, what the? Ah! You claim that you love me. I say please don't. You want to know how I got this way? My dread came from the only reality I ever knew. Like any other, I learned the threat of love through gla glassy eyes of adolescence. We possessed your nightmares long ago, although your body doesn't know. Your body is just fine, unaware of any sign of your brain's wrenching cries. Maybe that's just mine. You look at me and smile. My father's cheeky grin and my mom's I'm angry eyes. You are my brother's high-pitched laugh, grandma's teasing, grandpa's dancing. I was the firstborn, first daughter born to my family in generations. The family tongue had not spoken the word beautiful in so long that they felt as though it was only fair to exhaust it upon me and perhaps it was true. I was beautiful. Perhaps I was too pure still to recognize just how blue my eyes were. I was pure until I met lust. My therapist tells me it's a sign of insecurity. Uncertainty of whether or not this will help me define what is illusion and reality. I sit there and watch. A deck of cards looms within my pockets. Playing them out and playing with them just helps me think and feel free. She tells me it's a sign of attachment. It doesn't mean much carved into the stone above my broken and scattered bones. It will not only be thrown around with sad undertones. My name doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because I'll never get to hear the laughter of my children. I'll never get to hear them say, hey, mom, we love you. It doesn't matter that my name will always be in the back of my parents' mind. A dark poison only ever spoken between tears and sobs. Oh, God, why? My name doesn't matter. So she kept grabbing and grabbing and grabbing for more. She pulled all she could towards her and buried herself in the heaps. Now, surrounded and covered in the mountains of grains, all she could do was listen. She heard the little girl telling her brother jokes as they built a sandcastle. How do you fix a broken tuba? With a tuba glue! And the laughter came as quickly as blood rushing back after a pinch of the fingers. I want my curls to stand straight out, to feel the weightlessness as they bounce around my head, the wildness of letting it go natural. My idea was to be unnatural, to stop hiding and start shining. I wanted to impress, show others that being out there isn't such a bad thing. I want alien buns, pom-poms on the top of my head. Show the world what total abandon I have. You are going insane? The man glances up with a great kind of spur. He touches her hand, then he says to her, With knowledge in my brain and logic in my gloves, I wouldn't say you're insane, no. I'd say you're in love. In love? She laughs, agony in the sound. I could easily argue that statement to the ground. I'm not in love. And we've all heard the stories before of rejection, the 4 a.m. existential life reflection, the competition with a mirror over which image has the clear complexion, the strive for love but in the utterly wrong direction. I knew the person I was supposed to be, but who are you? More at home looking to the eyes of a doll than in her pair received at birth. When, when I was 12, the doll changed. She sat in front of me in class. She was thinner, curvier, smarter, more athletic. She sat atop the broken hearts. I felt a hole. And in my self loathing she had told me, You, you have to look a certain way to fit in. More often than not, I'm the white crayon. But when I am, I like to pretend I'm something different. Color me red. Passion, energy, all-encompassing warmth. It's like touching the sun without your feet ever leaving the ground. The mirror being your first easel. Magic markers swerving from the center. The purple, pink, and blue masterpiece shining back. Arcs that were on me tortured me. 
with the thought that you would never mark me again. Then they faded, but your presence in my head was ever so vivid and tainted. Then I'm out. Newsflash, I am neither convenient nor accessible. And sweetheart, I don't need to be part of your act. I am the act. You gotta pay up if you want in, all eyes on me, and mark my words, you well remember me, because I am the sweet, sweet cotton candy worth every hard-earned penny, and you are the, you are from the overpriced yet tasteless hot dog stand on the corner of the Ferris wheel. It's a catchy song, I'd sing it if only my body would let it. You see, my body isn't built that way. I don't have the larynx, the voice box, or the vocal cord to do it. I can't produce a harmonic sound that maybe you can. All of a sudden, the fun ends because I thought about you. I met a girl, and she's so sweet and funny, and she held my hand when we walked, but then I froze up, and we couldn't even talk because I thought about you. Now I'm up in the middle of the night, and I'm writing this poem because I thought about you. With a pen, you'll be more reluctant to erase mistakes, get lined paper, make sure everything's in order, details and all, the color of the boy's hair, or the way you tiptoe to his room. I've always been a little wary of elevators. Suspended cables brittle from years of ups and downs. Craving human interaction, I act in my usual fashion. Unaware of it, but happy to be a part of you plus her plus me. Doors open. We're eager, just along for the ride with a mutual friend. No particular destination at the end. Level one. You're blonde. What do you mean you get straight A's? What do you mean you do sports? What do you mean you do slam poetry? <laughs> I could do some scheming on the rhyme scheme, tongue tricks and quick leans, my subject, my predicate, little less raunchy, a little more delicate. My job is to hold you in. Drug you out, spread you thin like the butter on my bread, you eat it up. It's not about the stars. It has nothing to do with your mother in the cupboard or your daddy on Mars, still not about the sun. It's tired of being dragged into empty metaphors about so many no ones. It's the words. I got a lot of weight for something you cannot hold. <laughs> what is a poet? A poet is a red river renaissance running under skin and eroding organs. An unbroken essence. A cut, raw, and stinging. A poet. A poet is everything.